We're gonna shine a light on the bird strike issues with airplanes this episode of In the Hangar. Welcome to In the Hangar. I'm Dan Milliken. I'm Christy Wong. And I'm Bailey Ward. Of course, thank you so much to our sponsors. We have all of them linked below. Dan, what do we have today? What we have is lights. We're going to shine a light. Camera action? Lights. Ah. So uh, <laughs> joining us from Z Vision, Dan Blumel. Dan, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. We okay, so, around. <laughs> so, so Dan, you know, there's a lot of information that pilots really don't know about lights. And lights can, we'll, we'll get to the part about that they can actually reduce bird strikes. Dan, so take us through the history of airplane lighting, and, you know, from the tungsten all the way to LED and, and, and how that works to set us up. Okay, so there, there's three technologies. There's the original incandescent lighting that's been around forever, which started in farm tractors basically, and oh, wow. that's what they used with airplanes forever, and still a lot of airplanes still actually use those kind of lighting sources for landing and taxi lighting. Um, but then more recently, we moved, moved into HID, which really started into vogue, I'd say about 2000, the year 2000. And then more recently, I'd say in the last five, seven years, LED has become more, more predominant. Um, with the incandescent lamps, uh, they're called PAR lamps. P-A-R stands for parabolic aluminized reflector. And they're also used in stage lighting, at least they used to be, until everything changed to LED right, like right. it is now. Um, and that was the predominant thing too. But uh, they're really good at making heat, but they're not very efficient at making light. They're only about 10% efficient at making light. Um, and so they're really good at making heat, which is good for melting ice. And that one spot on your wing. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, again, we're trying to get more light and, and use less energy to do so. Um, HID um, was totally the opposite. It's radically more efficient. In fact, with incandescent lamps, you were getting about 16 lumens per watt out of an incandescent lamp. With an HID lamp, anywhere from 90 to 110 lumens for every watt you put in. Oh, wow. And the lumens is a measurement of light being produced. It has nothing to do with where it's going, but it's the light that's being produced. Um, and then LED is also very efficient up there in the same neighborhood as, as HID. But the problem is, the, the difference there is the optics. They use very small, what they're called TARs, which are little reflectors with each LED. And, and, and they try to fit a lot of them into a small space on, a, on an LED light. And if you really want a good landing light, they need to be much larger so that you can actually project the light downstream and actually use it as a good landing light. It's easy to make a good taxi light with LED, but not so easy to make a good landing light with LED. It is possible, but not as easy. Whereas HID is very easy because it's a single light source, so it's easy with a parabolic reflector to, to control it and make it either narrow for landing or much wider for taxiing. There's a study out that, that reveals that really good lighting can help reduce bird strikes. Can you talk about that? Yes, and the, the, actually the U.S. Department of Agriculture did a study a few years ago. Within a few years after the incident where they landed in the river in New York, um, when they hit some geese, I believe it was. <clears throat> and so a lot of research was done after that, and the U.S. Department of Agriculture did some research in terms of lighting as to what would be beneficial to help scare the birds away. And what they found was there's a range of color that the birds are more sensitive to, which is between 5,000 and 6,000 Kelvin is a typical number. So bluer. Well, it's not really, to be bluer, you really have to go beyond that. It's sort of on right. the edge of the blue, but 6,500 is more in the blue range, but it's getting there. So it's, it's more of a white light because direct daylight sunlight right. is usually around 5,500, 5,700 Kelvin. Um, and also that translates into a nanometers measurement if you want to get more scientific about it. There's a range of nanometers. I'm a liberal arts major. She's the uh, scientist, so yeah. I don't I'm know about school, Yeah, so. she's in. Well, the Kelvin is a so more she knows more than either one of us. <laughs> oh, gosh. Kelvin, you're, you're a little bit more familiar with because if you look on any of the advertisements of any of the light makers, they all talk about the color temperature being mm -hmm. in Kelvin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and video, we deal with that all the time. You know, we set our studio lights to 5600, you know, to match sunlight. Right. Um, or we'll go to 3200 to match incandescent, so yeah. But the other key feature was everyone, you know, any lights is better for scaring away birds also so other airplanes will see you. But the thing that's come into vogue the last few years also is wigwag, which is obviously more beneficial than just a light being unsteady because it'll get your attention more. But the same thing is also true for the birds just like it would be for other airplanes. 
And uh, a new advantage that, that, that we're, we've developed is actually it's a strobing effect. And in that same U.S. Department of Agriculture study, they also determined that a much higher frequency flashing, sort of like what police cars do and stuff, is actually much more effective with birds too. So obviously wigwag is better than nothing, but a strobing effect, just like your wingtip strobe, is actually more effective for the birds than, than would be just wigwag or steady lights to grab their attention. When you say wigwag, what do you mean? Well, um, a lot of I'm sure a lot of people, mm -hmm. pilots That's are familiar all? with it. Yeah. Yeah, they go back and forth. <laughs> That's literally really it. It's the strobe. It's the okay, I missed the... that part of my private pilot training. It, it's, it's, <laughs> oh, well then. We did not have wigwag and, you know, what far is that? <laughs> it's, just the, it's just the pattern of the strobe okay. lighting, basically. So well, instead of like, you know, it's literally. Instead of like what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it's been pretty popular, I'd say, the last five to ten years, a lot of people have put added wigwag features to their okay. existing lights. Now, the one thing about that, though, too, is if you have two lights very close together, you really don't want to wigwag them because at a distance they meld into one light. So you really want to oh. pulse them simultaneously if the lights are close together, or if you had two lights in your wing, a landing and a taxi, there's no point in wigwagging them mm -hmm. because they're so close that once you get maybe a quarter of a mile away, they become one. And so you would just see steady light the whole time. So it's only the f if they're far apart, and the farther apart they are, the better for wigwag effect. What, you know, for my plane, you know, I want to get the most efficient, brightest light I can. What, what's out there? Well, um, un until recently, HID has had the advantage okay. and, and still does to some extent have the advantage for long distance lighting. If you want to see a third of a mile, a half a mile down the runway to see those deer before you get on the runway and right. now you finally see them and it's too late to do anything, uh, then HID has been the predominant solution for that. And again, it's because most of the LEDs that are out there have very small optics and they don't reach very far. They're, they're adequate, but they, they don't reach a long way down the runway. And if you're landing in places that uh, there can be wild animals, um, it's going to be to your advantage to use something like HID. Or my company has come out with an LED that reaches out similarly far as does HID. The one advantage that LED does have over HID is you get a much more uniform intensity over the entire beam, which is about 10 degrees around for a landing light, 10 degrees round. Whereas with HID, you had a two or three degree very hot spot that reached out very far, but then the illumination dropped off fairly rapidly around it. Whereas with LED, you get that entire 10 degree beam is fairly close to the same intensity. So you see a lot more lighting off to the periphery than you would with an HID, unless you defocus the HID, but then what's the point of that? Because now the whole idea was to reach out farther. If you defocus it, the LED, so it doesn't reach out so far, then you don't have the advantage of the distance anymore. I want to see my airplane from 30 miles away. <laughs> well, you can at night very easily. I'd say in a clear day, you can see it from 100 miles away if you've got the right lights. Sold. <laughs> Done. The Wong Warrior is going to get some new lights. Oh, wow. I, I, well, I'm just, you sounds like you're deciding no, it sounds like it, No, it sounds like you offered to buy me some. Oh, no, yeah. well, well, we'll see. Uh, wow. Well, we've got Lola to, to deal with first. And, oh, right. Well, well here's the thing. We, we've all got, so we've got Lola, the Wong Warrior. We've got her 182. The Bailey Mobile. The Bailey Mobile. Oh, oh I like that. Is that what it's called now? I, that's just what Do I started calling it. you have a name for it. I don't. Okay, well, we've got to work on that. Well, that's right, because Joe Casey said, no, who, somebody. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So don't name your airplane. Don't name your airplane. Is your airplane female or male? It's female, of course. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so for our certified airplanes, um, it, it can, do these lights that you're talking about, these super bright lights, work for the uh, certified? Well, we're in the process of getting STCs currently, okay. and that takes some time. But I anticipate sometime around the middle of the year or maybe toward the end of the year in that range, that should be well underway, and we'd be able to start doing it through the STC process. In the meantime, if you have a friendly FESDO that's willing to do it, the 337 is a possibility as well. Okay, so we... Now, I've got them installed on a number of airplanes already. A 185 that I did back about a year ago. He actually put four lights in his airplane, believe it or not. He had some... He wants to really, really see the birds. He had some wingtip <laughs> extensions that had originally incandescent lamps on them. It's a Cessna 185. I think they were made by RMD. I forget who made the wingtips. But anyway, um, and we replaced them in there. But then he also had the two lights in the leading edge on the left the left side of the, the pilot side as well, and we changed those out. So we put a taxi and a landing in that section, and then we put two landings out on his wingtips as well. Wow. So you couldn't believe the amount of light. I mean, he could, he could go out in the backcountry 
and land at night without any fear at all of not being able to see everything that he needs to be considered. I'm not suggesting that's the best thing to do <laughs> right, right. Yeah. in the backcountry because there's more surprises. I mean, you're pushing the envelope for risk, obviously, in the backcountry, but it's definitely doable when you've got that much light illuminating everything you could possibly need to be concerned about. I, I like the idea of being able to see way down the runway uh, at Hicks for a deer or whatever. I was going to say Bridgeport at Bridgeport, night. Bridgeport, well, yeah. not even at night. Coyotes. It's at... Um, dusk and dawn when all the deer run across yeah. the runway there because I have been out there multiple times at dusk and dawn and there's just mm -hmm. like literally like a cluster of deer. Yeah, even with like my home field, Angelina County, like mm -hmm. so many neighborhoods surround the airport. So like dogs and stuff have been an issue at the airport. Oh, wow. So, I mean, that's amazing. Next up, we need to put like horns on <laughs> yeah. the airplane so that we can just scare away all the well, that, uh, I'd like to scare away the trucks that park at Hicks. <laughs> oh my God. Well, that, there place. you go. The horn would work. Okay. Well, one, one thing I was going to mention though too is that that new landing light that I mentioned, our LED has the strobe feature built in. And so you have got three modes of operation, full bright, a strobe mode and then a dimmed mode because it's so bright that you might offend other airplanes in the neighborhood and they might <laughs> want you to turn oh, your lights good. down a little bit so that they're not quite so bright. It's offensively bright. That yeah, should be your tagline. Like that's awesome. Bright. Yeah. Well, they are <laughs> a little subtle bright. flex. <laughs> <laughs> and, and to change the modes between them, it's just a matter of interrupting power momentarily. You can go between the three So modes. you can still have your old 1970s rocker switch yep. and you just kind of, okay. Turn it off for a couple of seconds, turn it back on, and then keep doing that, and you can go through the three modes. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So it doesn't require any special wiring, additional wiring, which is always a problem, especially if they're out in the wing. You're going to pull new wires to control your lights or synchronize them. And that's another thing I should mention. There's no advantage to synchronizing them if you have to, because it becomes even more wild when they're doing their own things independently of each other. And that's the whole point. You want it to be as crazy a pattern as possible to draw the attention of birds and other aircraft. Okay, and, and so the people, you have, haven't just started doing this. You've been doing it a while, so you're not just doing GA. What are some of the, for Z Vision, you, um, you've you got other contracts. and Military. You've been, yeah, you've been doing, t tell us yeah, about well, what you Yeah, we've, well, we've sold uh, battery-powered HID searchlights to the Israeli Navy. Mm -hmm. uh, did 80 of those a couple of years ago, and uh, we continue to do more of that kind of stuff. Uh, in the past, we've done agricultural work. Um, Underwater lighting, in fact, a lot of these multi-million dollar yachts have lights that go all the way around the base of the hull to illuminate the water, and we, we've done a lot of that as well. Through A lot of it is our customers. Like, we don't sell directly to the yacht people. We have the customers mm. that, that do, deal with that industry, and we sell to them, and they, in fact, sell to the uh, yacht owners and illuminate the water with lighting. If people want to uh, check out the products, think about putting some super bright landing taxi lights on their plane, where would they go? Well, our website, www.xevision.com, that's spelled X-E-V-I-S-I-O-N.com. But you pronounce it Z-Vision right. for Xenon? Yes, X -E. yeah, yeah. X -E is the atomic symbol yeah, for Xenon. Yeah, a little bit of science. Okay. And, the, <laughs> right. yeah. and, the, and the HID lighting has Xenon in it, and that's how we started back in about 2004. Perfect. Well, Dan, thank you so much for coming on, and uh, I appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing better in Lola. All right. you'll, you'll be stupefied. <laughs> or just stupid. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, we don't want to. I'd said it before because I knew you were going to say okay, it. Okay, good. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching. Um, again, links to all of our sponsors are going to be below. Uh, like, subscribe, share our content. And we'll see you guys next time in the hangar. Thank you.